Good morning, Camros. Morning, Grace Lutheran family. And what a blessing it is to be together once again this morning around God's word and sacrament and around one another who are able to share God's word and, and action in so many different ways. We're meeting here today as our uh, uh, brothers and sisters in, uh, meet in convention, or as we as a church meet in convention in, in Edmonton. Our representatives, uh, Otto Sellen, our congregational chair is there, uh, I understand. And so we carry on as God's people, whether we're in convention, according to Acts chapter 5, that's what the, uh, the first uh, church convention uh, was about, is to uh, answer questions, to make decisions, and uh, in, a, uh, in a orderly format, and that's what we're doing uh, at the 12th uh, convention in Edmonton. Today, uh, it's about life. A lot of people spend a lot of money. In fact, we all uh, take a lot of stock in terms of uh, life, so much so that life insurance is a big item, big commodity uh, that is sold, and uh, term life, and also disability insurance, health care insurance is uh, very much uh, tops in terms of our, our, our provincial spending. And so God talks about uh, what it is to have life very much in, in the Word. And uh, there's a comp not a competition, but a, a big uh, fight or a kerfuffle as to what really uh, is life. And if we have the Son, Jesus, we're, we have freedom and we have life. And so as Christians, we know that to be true. Today we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. It's an incredible Sunday where we... Uh, emphasize of who God is and our God is a triune God not in the scriptures but definitely shown in uh, holy scriptures God our heavenly father uh, who gives us life God the son Jesus who is our savior who gives us life who is the way truth and life and the holy spirit the paraclete or comforter where we know that even if our life is going sideways, as it were, we have the comfort of God's word and uh, the, uh, uh, having uh, the third person of the Holy Trinity being the comforter is very precious in, uh, in, in, in the world as we continue to live uh, when there's so much conflict and so much disagreement and heartache. And so you've come to a good place. I've come to a good place uh, to be here and is as before. It's an undeserved privilege to be here. Thank you, God, for the blessings of being able to be together once again. So today, again, we'll have uh, the Lord's Supper. Thank you to all of our uh, uh, the people it takes, it doesn't happen by itself, but it takes a lot to keep, to put uh, it together. And uh, God says, come, take and eat, take and drink. Uh, I taste bread or wine. It's the body and blood of Christ. That's what he says in his word. And if uh, you're, we want to have uh, those that are uh, confirmed, uh, the faith, that have confirmed the faith of their baptism, that they see this as being truly uh, God present in, with, and under ordinary forms of bread and wine, giving us the assurance of forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. If you see that and you believe that, come. If you're wanting to come and receive a blessing, well, hands over um, your chest a bit, and I'll certainly share a blessing with you and for you. And so we are blessed to be here for sure. And... And so let's uh, continue and carry on. Let's stand if you're able to. If you're not able to stand, that is fantastic also. And covering for us in Edmonton is Kyle Eddy. He's a candidate who's uh, finished seminary, and he's going to be going out to Prince George and uh, Vanderhoof, I believe, after. It'd be his first call. So God bless him as he leads Christ the King uh, congregation in Edmonton. And so we are gathered together in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Yes. Thank you. If we say that we have no sin, we're kidding ourselves, we're deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Well, upon this, your confession, mine too, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of us. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remain standing for the hymns. <laughs> sing of him who died for thee and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity crown him the lord of life who triumphed o'er the grave and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Let <clears throat> every kindred, every tribe, on this terrestrial ball. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. With yonder sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll 
join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Together, almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Maybe seated for a scripture song, or well, actually a children's lesson, and then our our canticle before the readings. So, as the story goes, and I'm sure many of you have heard this story, it was a man was lost at sea, and so he was in a boat. And uh, he needed to be rescued. It was all alone. He didn't have any oars. He didn't have any engine. Didn't have anything that... I wouldn't even know how to work it. But, you know, didn't have anything to get him back to shore. So uh, a, he was pretty sure that God would save him. The Lord was with him. God would save him. So a boat came along. And uh, he said, no, 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 no. Um, uh, God's going to save me. Don't, don't worry about it. You go. Then a helicopter came, and he said, no, 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 I'm okay, just go. God's going to save me. Then, uh, then another tugboat came, and he said, no, 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 God's going to save me. So this gentleman passed away, and uh, then he was in heaven, and as the story goes, he said to God, so why didn't you save me? And he said, sir, I sent two boats and a helicopter. So isn't that like us sometimes? We're unable to see our rescuer who's here. So the story we have today in John 8, where Jesus is in the temple and talk, talking to the Pharisees, they were unable to see the Messiah. Sometimes uh, God is always with us and always present, but, you know, I'm... If you're like me, I've thought a few times, if I could just see and touch these things. So I have a, a little bit of an object lesson. Uh, Keaton, can you come up to assist me? <laughs> just forgot to bring a little table. I, I planned it at the last minute, so Keaton will, will make up for my losses here, you know. Here you go. So if you can see this, if you could see this jar, do you see anything in it? Is there anything in it? There's nothing in it. Okay, now there's something in it, hey? This is water. You can see that it went in. But the page is dry. So it was protected, just like how the Father takes care of us, that Jesus is always omniscient, here, everywhere, with us, always. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Keaton. Mm -hmm. And 
truth and life bestowing open now the scriptures lord seed to life eternal sowing scattered on the wind abroad let not hearts your word receiving like a barren field be found choked with thorns and unbelieving shallow earth or stony ground may the spirit's power unceasing bring to life the hidden grain daily in our hearts increasing bearing fruit that shall remain so in scripture song and story savior may your voice be heard till our eyes behold your glory give us ears to hear your word Proverbs 8, am I coming through? Proverbs 8, 1 through 4, and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call. My cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he made the earth with its fields, or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, he made firm the skies above. When he established the foundations of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundation of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, the delight and delighting in the children of man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's speak Psalm chapter 8, verses 1 to 9 together. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look up at your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? and the son of man that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Majesty. 
Jesus the King, majesty, worship his majesty, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Acts 2, 14a to 22 and 36. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced my flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon your soul to hates, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he w was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that, you're, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he, said, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let the, all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Please stand, if you're able to, for the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter, and here after Peter's sermon, actually before, that Jesus uh, is uh, speaking words of truth, and uh, he is the truth, for sure. And so we listen, we do well to listen to him. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and did, as did the prophets, and yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Well, Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you're not 50 years old yet and yet you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated. taught the Jews of old the way of righteousness. They rose in anger, fierce and bold, and scored him to his face. The gospel truth conveys a dart though Satan should oppose. And often it does reach the heart of those who are its foes. But those who don't wish to believe will vent and spit this fight. Much rather than the truth receive, he blinded with a light. And thus the case is ever so, all such who teach the truth. In all they seek or say and do, they feel the serpent's tooth. Our text for this morning from our Holy Gospel, but also looking at other texts, of course, from St. John's Gospel. The Jews answer, Jesus, are, you, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Well, truly, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. So far, our text. We pray, gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and certainly God the Father and the Holy Spirit, our comforter, this day and always. Amen. 
So the, the question or the comment by these rabble rousers, we could call them, saying that Jesus has a demon, that he's not in his right mind. Well, these words come at the end of a very long conversation between Jesus and the Jewish leaders. It takes place during one of the great three festivals that the Jews celebrated every year. And in this case, for one, it's the Feast of Tabernacles. Jerusalem was bursting at the seams. There were people from all over the countryside. Jesus was teaching in the temple courts. He was centerpiece. And so the Jewish leaders didn't really particularly like Jesus. They sought an opportunity to question him and to put him down, to discredit him before the whole people. In effect, they said, are we not right in saying that you're not really one of us, you're a Samaritan and that you have a demon? Well, Jesus could have said, yeah, I have a demon, you got me. But no, what's the point? What are the Jewish leaders saying with those words? Well, they're not only saying that Jesus is lo lost a brick or short one rafter and that kind of stuff. His deck isn't quite full. They're saying, in effect, that he has a serious, serious problem. Such people were powerful and destructive, caused great harm to people and themselves. Having a demon in that case was the invisible taking control of the visible, another world breaking into this world and not for good. Just think of on the news this past week, there's a fellow who killed a little girl in... Um, and he said that the devil told him to ascend to a higher spot. He had to do that. So sad. The invisible taking control of the visible. Another world breaking into this world and not for good. And so saying Jesus has a demon, what they're saying in fact is that Jesus is evil instead of good. And then of course if he's evil, then what he says is evil. What he does is evil. He's dangerous to our society, shouldn't be tolerated, and in effect, you, Jesus, must be eradicated. You must be removed from society. Whatever it takes, you need to be gone. The eerie thing, though, is that this sounds an awful lot like a lot of what many people are saying today, which Jesus said would happen. If they did it to him, they will do it to you those of us who are in Christ. Think of all kinds of hot button issues swirling around our society. It used to be me too generation, and now it's woke generation, woke society. Issues regarding men and women, God's love for us all, marriage, sexuality, gender, gender equality, abortion, Provinces passing laws restricting any of those who would want to even protest. And we think it's bad in Canada. It's even worse in Russia, the Russian Federation. I saw a clip yesterday of a, a, an older woman protesting in St. Petersburg. And of course, it didn't take long at all of saying that we're, we're a people of love and that Russian Federation isn't Putin. Russia is a lot bigger than their leader. But of course, for her, as I was initially <laughs> saying, is that it didn't take long before police came up and said, you know, woman, this is, you're not allowed to do public protest, and your sign is public protest. So we have restrictions in Canada. It's worse even in other countries. In Canada, well, many of our parliamentar parliamentarians are on record saying, for example, that being pro-life is like being racist. It cannot be tolerated. Traditional Christian biblical morality is more than out of date. It's not appropriate for our culture in 21st century, and it's called evil. And we that teach it and hold to it are evil too. We're dangerous, and we cannot and shouldn't be tolerated. At our confirmation services, celebrations, a part of the rite, the service order, has to do with 
promising, I will intend to live according to the word of God and continue steadfast in this confession and the Christian church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. These are powerful words and a very solemn commitment for sure. So what does Jesus say in response to these um, pushes against him, to this accusation that he's evil and dangerous? Well, he says a bunch of things, really, the last of which is the most important since it marks what he's saying from the beginning. He says, truly, truly, as in really, listen up, listen up, I say to you, hear me. He says, I honor my father, I honor God the Father, God who's spirit, God who's omniscient. I honor him. Second, he says, I'm not seeking my own day in court. It's not about me. I'm not seeking my own glory. And thirdly, he says, if anyone keeps my word, he'll never see death. Well, which is ludicrous to the people around him, and they call him on it. It's quite a claim coming from a person who himself is going to see death, and not only death at a ripe age, but he's going to be like 33 years old, dying on a cross, humiliated, excruciatingly humiliated on a cross. But that is, in fact, the key to the whole thing. For first, Jesus honors his Father by keeping his word. All that was written of him in the Old Testament, all that was prophesied, all that the prophets wrote, Jesus is fulfilling, especially, and even so, his death on the cross for the sins of the whole world. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all, there's not one of us that is without sin, and God knows that. And so Jesus honors our Heavenly Father, by keeping his word. Secondly, he's not seeking his own glory, but his death on the cross is going to show the world the glory of God, the glory of God's love and mercy, that we have a God who doesn't demand that we do this for him, but who does this for you. Remember that scripture passage, greater love has no one than this, that he give up or she give up her life for another that we love our neighbor as ourselves, that we don't give in to sin, that we don't allow our neighbor to be using us as a doormat, but that we push back, but we do it with gentleness and respect, of course, praying and hoping and seeking the best of our neighbor, not seeking our glory, but seeking to help our neighbor be the best that she or he can be. And so Jesus, because of his death and resurrection, God is the creator of life. He's the one who dies. Jesus dies. Dies a death that is humiliating without clinging to life, but clinging to the word and by that word and promise. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't need to fear any evil. So we cling to God's word also as Jesus did. Jesus experienced death for us, the worst, excruciatingness. And so joined to him through a baptism, we pass through death as well. In Jesus, death is but a gate to eternal life. And so for Christians, we celebrate that death isn't the end, that we live as best as we can with the gifts that God has given and still continues to give and, and, and continues to share things with others through us. We continue to live and move knowing that God loves us and sends us to love even the unlovable. So the truth is that God is visible. Another world is breaking into this one in Jesus. Sure, we can't see Jesus, but he is with us in the word. And remember, God's word is true. Wherever two or three or three are gathered together in my name, there I'm with them, says Jesus, for our good, for life, and for life and hope beyond this life. And so just as God created life and you and me and all things, 
Just as he appeared to Moses in the burning bush to bring his people out of slavery and give them life again or new life out of the bondage to Pharaoh, just as he gave his people life, brought them out through the desert and the wilderness in a pillar of cloud and a fire by night, fed them with manna, gave them water to drink, just as Jesus settled him, or the pre-existent Christ settled him, his people, in the promised land. And so that same God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is now in the flesh and blood of Jesus, the invisible made visible, leading and guiding his people through life. And just as God gave his word and promises to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that they would have life, even though they had no home, just as he repeated those promises and words to David and Solomon and to w all the women around to give them life and promise, just as he spoke those words and promises through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Malachi, all the other prophets, even when they were in prison and exile, so the same God, our great God, is, is flesh and blood in Jesus, the invisible made visible, a world, another world, breaking into this one for you, for me, for our neighbor, for the world around us. And so the claim that Jesus is making when he says, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was I am, he's actually saying that he is God, God in the flesh, which is a mystery, and it's not easily comprehended this side of heaven. The creator of all flesh is none other than God himself, the life giver in the flesh, the word, Jesus gives life. The word spoken and poured and eaten and drank, and keeping those words, clinging to those words, relying on those words and treasuring those words is what we do again and again. And Sunday by Sunday, it's what really the children's lesson is about. God's indescribable. Sure, we can use water, we can use a cup and uh, crumpled paper as Pat did, but the whole thing is, is that the crumpled paper, we pull it apart, we feel crumpled often and walked on and ragged and weary, but God stretches us and straightens us up to say that I'm with you in the crumpledness of life. You might even be wet, but I will dry you off and I'll take you and use you to be my child servants for Jesus' sake. So before Abraham was, Jesus is. And though like Jesus, it might not be easy, we know that it's not easy for any of us, really, to be Christians. But God calls us still to be his people, regardless of whether we have a big home or a small home or no home. We may have many struggles. We might have very little struggles and trials. We might be attacked from doubts within, saying, who do you think you are? And maybe we're even called evil, even when all that we're doing is speaking the truth in love and trying to help our neighbor. Because really the Jewish leaders had it right. In a sense, the word that you believe, the word that you cling to, the word that you speak, the word of Jesus, that word is dangerous. It's dangerous to sin and to our sinful wants and desires. It cuts against sin and unbelief. God's word, remember, it's a sharp-edged sword, and it cleaves, it goes right through to the marrow, to the bone. So the word of God is active and living, sharper even than a two-edged sword. It cuts into the territory of the devil and his kingdom, right? The devil doesn't want us to know the truth of who Jesus is, who God is, Jesus, God in the flesh. The devil wants us to be in his kingdom, would want to rule our hearts. It's dangerous to a world, God's word is, to a world that continues to be steeped in sin for a long time. And yet... God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Even if it hurts for a while, God's word does. 
God's word contains both law, which shows us our sins, but the sweet gospel, which shows us always our Savior, Jesus. And so it is a time of festival, whether it's the tent of feasts or booths or tabernacles. The Jewish people had feasts and regularness throughout the year, and they still do. In the midst of this, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not work, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So we shouldn't su be surprised if we see di things differently than the world around us. If those in the dark call themselves enlightened just because their eyes are more used to the dark than others, well, that doesn't mean that Jesus, what his words say, aren't true. For Jesus still is the light of the world. And so when you're called evil, when what you say and think and do and believe is called evil, when you're threatened and called, uh, you're called a Samaritan even, not that being a Samaritan is uh, wrong or, or derogatory at all. If you're called a hater or a bigot, when you're considered dangerous and intolerable, what do we do and say? Well, we can speak the truth in love as Jesus did. Continue to pray that God would give you words to say. Words, I love you. Why? Well, because God loves us first. Don't turn the light off and let the darkness have its way. Continue to speak. Confess the truth as you're able to as we speak the creed, the Apostles' Creed this morning together. For the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, who worked through the Word in you to create and to strengthen the Christian faith, he will work through his word in others. And know that even if our worldly wealth is taken away, remember that section in A Mighty Fortress is Our God, Luther says, were they to take our spouse and health and wealth, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's really ours forever. Even if others kill you on, for the sake of the gospel, they can't truly snuff out our life, for our life is eternal in Christ. All of that is signed and sealed and delivered when Jesus rose from the grave. For as Jesus said, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. We'll never be truly separated from God by death and his love for us in the whole world. And then also this too we remember is that Jesus' word spoken to you, whether it's you speaking to others or me, well, his word tells us the truth. The truth is that you are loved. You are loved with an everlasting love. The, the truth also that you are forgiven, even if others will not forgive you. You will hear also that the truth is that what God has given you, no one can steal. No rot, no moth, no thieves. Last Sunday, I wanted to go for a bike ride. Well, great, jump on and get her going. I look, it's like, where is my bike? It's like, well, my bike was stolen. So, but thieves can't steal eternal life. They might be able to steal my bike, and it's sad. But God willing, might get it back. Hmm. Yeah, and so forgiveness, life, and salvation can't be stolen away from us. The truth of life and death, it's in God's hands. It's not in the hands of our government or someone else. The truth that Jesus is here in his body and blood to feed and to nourish, to strengthen us in this challenging and confusing world, that's wonderful. And that's something that we can take to the bank, as it were, that we can lean on. That's really what Holy Trinity Sunday is all about. It's about life. It's about the life that God has given to you, to me, to all people. And it's life that's created, life that is sustained, life that is restored, life eternal. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit want you and me to have life and to share life with others. Share Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life, life in communion with God, not apart, life that comes only through his word, not through some fancy this or that, but through the word of God. So continue to hear his word, 
Confess his word. Read, mark, inwardly digest his word. Live in his word. And so give glory to God who has shown and continues to show mercy to us and to the whole world. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus, both now and to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand if you're able to, and let's confess the Apostles' Creed together. And again, it's a, a whole pile of the world and say, that's not what we believe. But here we say together that we do believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together. Blessed Heavenly Father, from you comes all that is, and we are forever indebted to your grace for the gift of life. Receive this day our special thanks for the redemption you have provided in Jesus Christ, your Son, for the work of the Holy Spirit in bringing us to know you by faith and to, uh, for the blessings of being adopted as your children by baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would live. Grant your Holy Spirit that, hearing your word, all of us would be brought to repentance. The world around would be brought to repentance and that we would all confess together the faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Father, you have revealed yourself to us in Christ Jesus, that we would know you by faith and confess you before the whole world. Give to us your Holy Spirit that all churches would confess truly and faithfully your word and live in harmony of doctrine and life in anticipation for that day when we shall kneel together at your heavenly altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Father, you have established marriage and sanctified the home to be a place of blessing and love and peace. Give to parents and children the courage to love as you have loved us. Unite them in their common life by your Holy Spirit to know Jesus and to serve him always. Bless those who are single with chastity, comfort the widowed, protect the orphan, and defend the helpless. And in particular, Lord, we ask your blessings on the marriage of Cameron Burke. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Lord, Heavenly Father, you guard your world as your own possession and have established governments and leaders to serve your good purposes. Bless our Prime Minister, Justin, our Premier, Jason, and all elected and appointed officials that in their stewardship of both nation and province, they may be faithful and serve honorably for our benefit and the benefit of all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And blessed Heavenly Father, you have suffered fully the cost of love through your Son, Jesus. Give healing and peace to all afflicted, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Owen Johnson, the family and friends of Marilyn Olison's brother, and all those we name in our hearts before you at this time. Give to them all that is needful, that they would endure their illnesses, confident of your presence. Supply them with grace sufficient for every need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
And Lord God, be also with all of the people gathered uh, together in the 12th Convention of our Lutheran Church Canada in Edmonton. Bless the decision-making and all the elections. May all be done to your honor and glory and praise so that your word would ring out and your sacraments would be faithfully given to your people so that the world around would know you, Lord Jesus, as your Savior, and that we would love others as you first loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And blessed Father, your Son was the voice that spoke all things into existence, and your grace still preserves all that you have made. You did not abandon your people when they abandoned you, but you have delivered us by the blood of Christ. Get, grant us your Holy Spirit that we would know your word and keep it in faith through the days of our earthly pilgrimage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And all these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and who now lives and teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the offering and the song. God is the giver. stand if you're able to. The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy upon us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Maybe seat it and sing the Agnes Day. Lamb. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Mercy on us. Have mercy on us, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So everybody's seated, we'll serve the servers first table and then after everybody else. our Lord's table. Take eat the body of Christ broken for you. Take eat the body of Christ broken for you, Carolyn. Take eat the body of Christ broken for you. Take eat the body of Christ broken for you. Yeah, God bless you and keep you always. True faith in Jesus to life everlasting. Your baptism connects you to him for sure. So oh. 
Christ. Lord, may your body and your blood be for my soul the highest good. What higher gift can we inherit? It is faith's bond and solid base. It is the strength of heart and spirit. The covenant of hope and grace. Lord, may your body and your blood be for my soul the highest
Please stand as you're able to, and let's pray together the prayer that celebrates God's goodness to us through this special meal. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this life-giving gift, and we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you always his peace. Amen. We sing the concluding hymn, Beautiful Savior. shines purer than all the angels in the sky. Beautiful Savior, Lord of the nations, Son of Yeah, and as uh, with Holy Trinity Sunday, if we remember anything is that God, our triune God has given us life, and not only life to just live, but to have it abundantly, for sure. And the news flash, if you haven't been following yet, or haven't heard, is just to re, uh, we rejoice and give thanks to God that for our, our synodical president, uh, Tim Teuscher is again uh, our, our, our president for another three-year term, and then for our districts or regions, Western Regent Robert Mons, 
Central, David, ha David Haverstock, and, uh, and uh, Reverend Bob Litz uh, for the eastern, uh, eastern section of our country. And so we give thanks to God and pray for his blessings uh, to those individuals and to us as we serve and in, in Christ's kingdom to build and to live and move and just have our being. Amen. So we go in peace. We continue to serve the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, tea, coffee, juice, water downstairs, fellowship. Enjoy. Come downstairs if you're able to. Thank mm -hmm. you.